tend to do three videos in a row in the studio, but I just feel so good in here. Okay, moving on. Okay, now in design, you're gonna hear two words more than any other words, strategy and authority. Today, we're gonna be talking about strategy. Strategy and authority are by far the two most valuable aspects about design you're going to learn. Strategy represents the way that you're going to interact with the world. It's your strategy for engaging with everything around you in a way that leads to your signature and not to resistance. Authority has a lot more to do with your decision-making process. So when you combine strategy and authority together, what you're getting is how you're meant to engage and how you're meant to make decisions. Everything that comes to you, then this is how you decide whether or not it's for you. Now, mechanically, strategy is something that comes from type. I'm a projector. My strategy is to wait to be invited. Each of us is meant to engage with energy a little bit differently. And that's where our strategy comes in. Strategy, your engagement strategy, is based on what type you are. So there are four different types and that makes for four different strategies. Strategy is supposed to be able to move you to your signature. If you're not using your strategy properly, you can understand this because what you'll be experiencing is your not self theme. So as a projector, if I don't wait to be invited, I'm going to experience bitterness instead of success. As a projector, I have to be made of only projected channels. If I had any other kind of channel, I would be a different type. So as a projector, I'm only going to have projected channels. Now, something that really needs to be understood about mechanics is we don't kind of like, oh, I want to turn it on or I don't want to turn it on. That's not really how it works. As a projector with my projected channel, I only have one. It has to be recognized and invited in order to guide. Guiding isn't something that we can just do all of the time. In fact, people really don't like our guidance if they didn't invite us to give it. Hence, waiting to be invited clears resistance, makes it easier to guide the other, turns on my channel, it's very easy to use, it all flows very nicely. But if I don't wait to be invited, then I'm trying to guide something without actually turning my channel on. It's gonna be nothing but resistance, nothing but bitterness. You know, the projector aura is penetrative. It's penetrative. And so really what I'm looking for is consent. So when I wait to be invited, really what that person is doing is saying, come and penetrate me, read me, grab my monopole, read me, and then guide me. You wouldn't want to penetrate without consent. You're not going to want to guide without an invitation. Let's talk about manifestors. If you're a manifester, your strategy is very different. You're here to inform and then initiate. There are a few challenges though in this strategy. Challenge number one is waiting. You know, every single type has wait a lunar cycle, wait to respond, wait to be invited. The manifester one doesn't specifically say wait, however, all types have to wait to some degree because manifestors work in urges, okay? They get a big poof, a bit poof, a poof. <laughs> that was kind of a funny word. I didn't expect that one. They get a what's <laughs> up? They get a <laughs> Oh my goodness. They get a that of energy. It has a big impact. And then they need a rest cycle. They have to kind of let that energy build up again. So they end up waiting for that energy to build up again before they go out and initiate. Now the most complicated part of manifestor strategy is that informing is not a genetic strategy. It's not something that they're born to do and it's not something they particularly want to do. The reason that manifestors inform is just to make their lives easier. And when I say easier, I mean more peaceful. Peace is their signature. When a manifester is able to inform somebody before initiating something, really what they're doing is letting somebody know if you don't get out of the way right now, you're about to be impacted in a way that you might find to be kind of uncomfortable. So I'm gonna let you know so that you can either help me or you can get out of my way so that I can move forward with what I'm about to do. Now, the reason that we rely on manifestors to inform us is because we can't read them. Even as a projector, I can't really read a manifester. Their aura, their type aura is closed 
and repelling. Closed off and repelling. Now, if I can't read that, I can't tell what they're up to. I don't know what they're about to do. I don't really know what they want. They have to, honestly, as a projector, they would have to inform me of what's going on. And if they want any support from me, they'd have to recognize and invite that support from me. Now, let's say the manifestor chooses not to inform and then they try and initiate anyway. Usually what's gonna happen is that somebody's gonna get in their way, somebody's gonna block them, somebody's gonna create resistance in their life, that's gonna take them out of peace, and ultimately, it's gonna piss them off. And that's why the manifestor not self theme is anger. Let's talk about our true minority type, the reflector. Now, reflector strategy is very, very, very different from everybody else's. And it kind of ties in with their authority. In fact, strategy and authority is most closely linked for the reflector. Reflector strategy, wait a lunar cycle. Wait a lunar cycle. Now, what's the benefit to all that time? Why is it a good thing to wait that long to engage? The strategy is about our engagement, how we engage with the world around us. Why would a reflector want to wait so long before getting involved in something? The reason is because they have no consistent definition of their own. In a reflector, all nine centers are undefined. They get activated by the program. And what happens when they take a long time to process something is that they get a lot of information. Less time to process, less information to be discerning with. Now, what happens if the reflector doesn't wait a lunar cycle? Disappointment. Every time we resist our strategy, what we end up doing is putting ourselves closer and closer to our not-self theme. The reflector's not-self theme is disappointment. Their signature is surprise. So that tells me that for a reflector's experiment, the longer they can wait for things, the more likely they're going to be surprised by the outcome. The less patience they have, the more likely they're going to be disappointed in the outcome. According to source information, and when I say source, I mean the original information that came from RAW. According to source-based information, there are four types. They are defined in very, very clear ways. The sacral being is clearly defined by a defined sacral. Whether you're a generator or a manifesting generator, the defined sacral starts the party. And it starts the party by waiting to respond. You're never gonna release all of that amazing energy if it doesn't have a response. It has to wait to respond. Now, once you've had a true response, and I'm talking about a gut response that says, I have energy for this, let me at it. If you have that, Go, fly freely. But if you're not having that, if you're having a response that's going, uh, and it's something that tells me there's no energy there, that's not for you. You can just knock that off the table. Strategy is wait to respond. Wait to respond for something next. Number one step that can't be skipped over is wait to respond. Now, if you can manage to wait to respond, you're gonna have a much more satisfying life and it's gonna happen a lot easier than you think it's going to. It's what we call it like getting into a flow. But if you don't wait to respond, if you're initiating, especially from the mind, you're going to be very frustrated. You're gonna start projects that you think that you have energy for, but you really don't because you realize it wasn't actually the sacral responding, so there isn't anything to maintain that energy. What was probably responding, reacting, with something in one of the undefined centers, something in the not-self that goes, I need this for whatever reason, but it can't sustain it because it wasn't a true response, and so you lose the energy, and that ends up in frustration, and honestly, a lot of uncompleted projects. That was a fairly mechanical part of the conversation. Now I'm gonna shift, and I wanna talk about trust. Trust is really, Trust is really important because these things are hard to do if you don't trust that they're gonna work and you don't trust yourself to work them the, may, the, the way that they're meant to be worked. That was a little bit hard to get out there. But you have to develop a level of trust in order to pull any of this off. Now, when I wanna acknowledge sacral beings, sacral beings are the most important ones for me because 
trust. Taste cognition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are the right words? I don't think I'm gonna edit this out because this is how I process. When things get more important to me, there's a bit of a, I really wanna make sure that I say this the right way, taste cognition coming through, being discerning with my words. Sacral beings are so used to doing what they're told they should do. When they get told to do something and it's not something that they actually have a response for, they're deepening their own conditioning that they should be working on things that they don't have a response to. And the more that they do that, the more frustrated they get. They can honestly get into a very dark place of depression, thinking that nothing is going to work out, nothing is going to feel good, there's no possible way that they could have this satisfying life. Their trust in themselves and in the process isn't solid. Now, when I can get my generators to, res to feel their response, and when they're having a yes response to something, if I can get them to actually prioritize that thing, to see themselves as worthy of prioritizing the thing that they have a response to, then what they end up doing without realizing it is turning up the magnetism on that sacral center. The sacral is a magnetic aura. It is pulling things in. The stronger this magnet gets, the more it's like, and we're gonna pull things in faster and faster and faster. So I'm telling you, you can up your satisfaction, you can do it faster, honestly, kind of just by believing in yourself. I know it sounds cliche, but if you support yourself, if you believe in yourself, if you think that you have a right to do the things that feel good for you, you're gonna up. You're gonna up the magnetism. You're gonna pull in more things. That weight to respond gets a lot less painful when you're doing the right things with the responses that you're having. You're building this trust in yourself and in your strategy that if you wait to respond, you're going to be brought amazing things to respond to. But you have to have the patience to wait and the trust that this is gonna work. Waiting is hard. Being patient is hard. And you know what? This is probably such, such a big thing for me because my Sun gate is gate five, and patience, or lack of patience, is a, is a huge part of my sun gate. I'm well aware that I'm a pretty impatient person, and that sense of impatience in my life definitely had me try to be recognized, try to get invited, try to, because I didn't believe that if I waited and I studied and I allowed myself to be seen, then I would be recognized and invited into my success. When you live a life that is you know, counterproductive to your mechanics and you spend most of your life in your not self theme, I can understand why there's resistance to trusting in the fact that patience is actually gonna get you where you need to go. All right. This has been informative, maybe even actually a little bit more heartfelt than I intended, which is a very funny thing to say now that I've said it because I'm a defined ego. I am all heart, but it's unconscious, so I'm not always aware of it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.